Hi, I'm Chris Thompson, Product Manager of Vacuum Excavation here at Ditchwich, and today we're very excited to bring to you the W8. It's our follow-up to the W12, the second in our Warlock series of truck packs. Some things we want to talk about the truck before we get started. I know everyone wants to know about the specs, so let's go over the high-level specs. This is going to have a 9-liter engine in it. We're going to use a transfer case to power the blower on that. What that means is that we're direct driving that blower through the engine. We're not going to use any kind of a pump, which causes less efficiency and causes more maintenance. We're going to use a drop blower here. That's the same brand of blower that we use on the W12. The reason we do that is because it allows a very quiet operation, which has been very popular in the W12. So we're going to keep that going. 3800 CFM on the blower, also 27 inches of mercury. If you look, that's going to be class leading in where we're at on the specs. Also, this truck is going to be a little bit smaller than W12 by design. It's going to be 66,000 gross vehicle weight rating. The important thing about that is that we know that in certain areas you're going to be weight restricted on what you can actually haul. And so what we've done is we put a digital scale on board that's going to read out on the remote. So the scale will give you the weight on the remote. You can also program the truck so it'll stop suction at a predetermined weight. That way you don't have to worry about being overweight when you're on the road with this truck. Additionally, these trucks are going to come with an automatic transmission on them. These have a six-speed Allison. You can get it in a Kenworth or you can get it in a Peterbilt. Today we're going to walk around the Peterbilt. So let's get after the truck. All right, so here we are at the chassis. First thing to notice is we do have two chassis options. We have the Peterbilt 548, or you can get a Kenworth T480 if you prefer Kenworth. Those are both available, they'll both come in black. Walking down the truck, you'll notice a couple changes from our previous series. We have dual air ride seats in the trucks now, and so that's gonna move that battery box. We'll talk about that in a moment. If you have dual air ride seats in the cab, still have the same ARCOM remote. So the remote's gonna work the same way it does on the W12. We are gonna hold red, hold green, release red, release green, and now your remote's going to be live. The instructions are on here if you need those. Talk about the remote again in a minute because there's some important changes we'll need to let you know about. The charging station on here is comes loose. The reason we did that is we know people want to mount these in different spots. You can hardwire it into the truck if you'd like to, or also you can charge by USB. We do provide a cord and a charger for you. You can charge that off the USB if you'd like. If that comes loose on purpose as you can find the spot that works for your setup on where you want to put that charger. Moving down to the boom, we have a 26 foot boom here. It has eight inch opening. We also provide a reducer if you want to go down to six inch tooling. We have dig tubes here as well. Talking about the opening on the boom, there's eight inches opening as we talked about, but behind the boom, past the turret, it's 10 inch plumbing all the way through the truck. The reason we do that is it makes the blower more efficient when you don't reduce it down. Also, it reduces the noise level. So we're using that Jurat blower, the same brand that we use in the W12. It's gonna give you that sound performance that people have come to really like. That's 3800 CFM, 27 inches of mercury on the lift. Moving down to the truck, you'll notice the water fill is here in this cabinet. Here's your water fill, and then also your cyclonic clean out is right here. So at the end of the day, you can hook your wash wand up to the cyclone, blow it out, clean out your cyclones, and you fill your water right here. Also, if you'll notice, there's a, there's a step right here. So what you do, Take these dig tubes off, that's going to clear out your spot, move your boom, and then you, this will fold over, creates a nice working platform for you. So if you ever need any service on the filtration or any service on the hydraulics or on the blower, you can do that from this spot right here, have a nice clear area to stand on. Moving down to the cabinet, when you open the cabinet, you'll notice that we have the same boiler, the 420,000 BTU boiler in the truck. Also the antifreeze is internal right here, you have your hose reel here. And one of the big changes we made between the two series is we moved the pump to the front of the truck. So this is a 20 GPM cat pump. It's right here, very easy to access and service. Additionally, when you go to antifreeze the truck or you want to change your filtration, you simply unscrew this banjo valve here and you can drain out the filtration so you can antifreeze it or clean out your filter. That's a no tooling required on that, you just can hand screw that. We use the same concept here. We have two water tanks on this side, two water tanks on the other side, a total of 800 gallons of fresh water. The side glasses are here, same thing where they're plumbed, back and front, side to side, so that they fill evenly and they also go down evenly. That really helps with the weight balance on the truck. Sometimes in competitor's trucks, whenever your water's in a different location, it can get, make the truck a little uneasy, especially if you start moving down to a little bit smaller chassis. This one's going to always stay even for you so that your center of gravity is right and the truck always roads well. Moving down the truck, you'll notice we have a 
transfer case gear oil holder here. So this is a remote fill so that you can service the transfer case oil a little bit easier. Also, we have a large storage box here. So you open this up and you can put your tool in here. You can put a filter in here. We made this open so that you can put whatever you'd like to on the truck. We know space is somewhat limited on a smaller rig. And so we're trying to give you some storage on there. If you do select the Vanier option, which will be available soon, then you will lose this storage box and then the Vanier compressor will go right here. Moving down to the control cabinet. Very similar to what you're used to on a, on a truck here with a nice big display and then the control buttons here. I have the words that tell you what they do, also the ISO symbols, and they'll tell you, you know, your remote's on, increase, decrease your engine RPM, set your water pump settings, and then you'll have your same display case that you can use to diagnose if you're having an issue in there. This display, this display will tell you what's going on with your truck. Additionally, the pairing for the remote is behind this box. And so what you'll want to do is unscrew both these tabs here, this will pull open, and then there'll be a spot to pair the remote. Moving down to the hydraulic cabinet, one thing that's new for the trucks that you'll want to know about is you have a knockout for the remote. So this door is open, your remote's not going to work. What's going to happen is if you look at your remote, instead of the functions being black, the functions will be grayed out. And so that's going to tell you that your remote does not have communication with the truck. The reason is, is because this hydraulic door is open. The reason we did that is for a safety reason. So if someone is operating on the other side of the truck and they have control of the truck with a remote, they, we don't want someone to be able to come in here and open the door and move the booms on or move things on them. And so we've knocked out the remote if this door is open as a safety feature. Also, you have your tank prop here. So if you want to work underneath the tank, you raise the tank, move your tank prop, and that'll put the red bar down so you can safely work under the truck. We still have the hydraulic bypass here and the tank here. So if you want to make sure that your tank doesn't move at all while you're moving debris, you can sit here and close that out. You can also turn off your hydraulics if you'd like as well. On the back of the truck, we have the e-stop. Two e-stops on this truck, one here at the back and then one on the remote. We also have the auxiliary hydraulics here, 12 GPM circuit, same as what you're used to on our previous truck. Coming to the back of the truck, you'll notice that we have a design where our tank lifts and then the door fully opens. We find that that makes it a lot easier to dump your spools at the end of the day. Also, there's a vibrator on board. And so you can vibrate if you have anything that's kind of sticky or it kind of settles out whenever you're traveling, as things tend to do when you're going a longer distance to dump and everything starts to dewater. You can turn on the vibrator to help shake that out. We have a dump valve here. We also have an in port if you want to suck into the back of the truck, particularly like a micro trenching application, you can do that. We have a platform here. So the reason we kept this platform here, so when you're cleaning the truck, you don't have to worry about getting down into this mud and this muck whenever you're doing that. So you simply step up on the platform, we have a handrail here, and now you can access anything you need to on the truck here from this side as well as clean it out, and you're there in an elevated position. We still have the same mister here, and so you hook up your wash to the mister, and it's going to mist inside the tank. If you're doing an air excavation, or you're doing some kind of a dry material to help kind of keep that tamped down inside the tank. Over on the other side, you'll notice we have a ladder here. So this ladder brings you up to the boom access platform, you simply address the ladder and then climb up to the top. And then when you're at the top, you have a handheld here. There are D-rings provided up here so that you can take your safety harness and hook them to them. There's two points here at the back of the truck and then one at the front of the truck also. So you can always have that harness hooked up to the truck. From this point on the ladder, you can reach forward, pull out your pin, and then you will raise the boom access platform into position, replace the pin in the locking position. Now you can safely get onto the boom access platform that way, if you need to do anything up at the truck, you need to service the boom, you need to check out and clean out the turret box, you need to do your inspection port, you can all do that safely with the boom access platform up. Coming around to the driver's side of the truck, you'll notice there are some storage cabinets in the back so that you can put some extra stuff in here. We also have the fire extinguisher and the first aid kit in the first box. In the second box is going to be your eye wash station and your ear protection, and then also additional storage here as well. As we talked about the water tanks on the side here, on this side it keeps things even. You have your cone holder here. There's a little hold out here so that you can pin out your cones so that someone doesn't come and take them. This is your battery box. As we mentioned at the beginning, there's air ride seats in the truck so the batteries have to go external to the truck. Here's the battery box. And then here's your disconnect for your batteries right out here. We have the cyclone filtration here. This is gonna come with the make and break seal as well. And so whenever you raise the tank, it's going to break the vacuum. When the tank is seated, it's going to help create that vacuum by seating it in. That allows us to have less hose on the truck, which makes it be more efficient. 
but the filtration will come through here, the heavies will drop out, the lights will go through the media filtration, then they'll go out the exhaust. We also have the silencer here as well. This is a very similar setup to what we do on our other truck, the W12, as well as our HX series. Works very well for us. Fuel and def here on the driver's side, so they're easy to fill up whenever you're needing to do that. Also, we have the blower lube here. So the way the blower lube works is, once the truck is cooled off, you do not want to do this when the truck is hot. Once the truck is cooled off for the day, either uh, at the end of the day or maybe in the morning before you start, what you want to do is you want to hold this down. For about 10 seconds, you're going to look for a puff of white smoke that's going to come out the top, then you're going to know that your blower is properly lubed. You'll want to do that as a daily maintenance point. Then let's get in the cab. We'll talk about a couple things in the cab. Here on your left hand is your strobe. You turn your strobe on and then now you can turn on your aero board and you can run your aero board from here. When you're done, turn the aero board off, turn your strobe off. If you'd like to run your strobe without running the aero board, you can, but you cannot run the aero board without having your strobe on. Let's talk about how to put the truck in operation mode. So once you're in the truck, you'll want to push the brake down even though your parking brake is on and then you're going to hold this button down it's going to be amber you're going to wait until it goes green and you're going to release once it's green go ahead and turn your blower on until it goes to green then you're going to go from neutral to drive it's going to automatically idle up the engine and it's going to put the truck into fourth gear that's the gear we want you operating on this automatic allison transmission when you're running the truck once you hear it kick in and it says four here you're good to release the brake once you release the brake these buttons are going to go to red Red means that the shaft is spinning and that your transfer case is engaged, your blower is engaged. Once you're done at the end of the day, just reverse the steps. Press on the brake, go ahead and put the truck into neutral. Once the truck is in neutral, hold the buttons down until they go to green. You're good to let off the brake. Once you let off the brake, you can hold the buttons down again until they go back to amber, which is the startup state. Some things you also want to know about these buttons. If you get a blue button, that means that your boom is out of the cradle. If you get a purple button, that means that the boom is in the dump position, not the, not the drive position or stow position. Also, if you get a buzzer, that means that your tank isn't properly seated. And so you want to make sure you check in that the tank is properly down before moving the truck. Also in the cab, you'll have your digital scale. As we talked about previously, the scale will display on the remote. You also can check it here inside the truck. As you can tell, we're excited to bring the W8 to the market and to you, our customer. One feature we need to talk about before we go is the best feature of the truck, which is the local ditch witch dealer. They're going to have the same sales support and service after the sale you come to expect. To learn more about the truck, contact your local dealer. Thank you.